Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in West Los Angeles, and today we are going to make molten chocolate cake. So the ingredients of the molten chocolate cake are four ounces of unsalted butter that I have sliced here, four ounces of bittersweet chocolate chips, two whole eggs plus two egg yolks, a quarter cup of flour, a quarter cup of granulated sugar plus two tablespoons, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So our first step with our molten chocolate cake is to melt our chocolate and our butter together. We're going to melt this in a contraption called a bain-marie. It's really important that for the bain-marie we have a bowl that is absolutely dry. Chocolate and water do not like each other, so if you have a slight bit of moisture in here, go ahead and wipe the bowl dry. Chocolate chips are going to go into the bowl, and our butter is going to go into the bowl. Then this entire bowl is gonna get set over a pot of barely simmering water, making sure that the bowl that's over the pot is not touching the water. You wanna have just steam coming up from the gently simmering water to come in contact with the bowl and gently melt the chocolate and the butter. And uh, while that continues to melt, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to get the rest of my cake batter together. Starting off with our, four, with our two whole eggs and two egg yolks, gonna go into a bowl. Our quarter cup of granulated sugar plus a couple of tablespoons. Gonna mix that together with a whip. Really important you look to just get it blended together. Don't whip the heck out of it. You don't wanna whip a lot of air into this mixture or else the cake is gonna become uh, too airy, too fluffy. Once it get, after it gets blended together like this, we're gonna add in our flour. This is a quarter cup. Gently stir that in. At this point, you're gonna see I'm gonna use the whip very much like a spoon and just stir it and get it blended. If you have little lumps of flour in this mixture, that's fine, leave them alone. Quarter teaspoon of salt's gonna go in as well. The salt's actually gonna really help bring out the flavor of the chocolate in the cake. Salt uh, is really important in dessert making as well as savory cooking. We're gonna check on our chocolate. Little bits of butter still left inside the bowl. Majority of the chocolate is melted. If I give this just a little stir, maybe press on my bits of butter, this will become absolutely smooth and ready to cool just slightly, okay? Great way to tell if uh, the chocolate is uh, cool enough to get into the eggs is to take a clean finger and dip it on in there. If it's lukewarm, which it is, it's ready to go. If it's really hot, you're gonna have to let it cool off for a little bit. Stirring it for those few moments that you just saw me do helped cool it off enough. So I'm gonna take my chocolate and I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my eggs. And as I start to combine it with the whip, you can still see those lumps of flour that I was talking about. That's absolutely fine, okay? Just leave those in there. As the batter sits inside the ramekin, the flour is gonna hydrate and those lumps will wind up being absorbed. Buttered and sugared ramekins, technique of which you can see elsewhere. And I can actually just take this little batter and pour it right from the bowl. You may find it'll be a little bit easier to use something like a ladle, okay? Gonna wind up taking my ladle, get a nice scoop of batter in here, scrape it along the edge of the uh, bowl, get it right onto the ramekin, and go ahead and pour it on in. The wonderful thing about this recipe is that once I get this batter into these ramekins, I could actually put these ramekins into the refrigerator. I can let them chill overnight. I could even let them chill for a couple of days. Bring them on out probably about 45 minutes before you're ready to bake. Turn on your oven. And when your oven is preheated to 375 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and pop these guys in and we're gonna bake them. They'll take about 10, maybe 15 minutes to bake. It's gonna be unlike other cakes, that you have seen or that you have baked in the past. And the reason is, is that we're actually gonna bake this until the cake actually starts to get kind of a set look around the edges. And when we take a toothpick and go into the center, the toothpick should come out thickly coated with chocolate gooey goodness. Get them onto a baking sheet so they're a lot easier to get in and out of the oven. And 375 for about 10 minutes. When the cakes come out of the oven, is that they're gonna have a set look, typically around the rim, and then the inside, in the center, you can clearly see that the cake is still really jiggly. Our next step is to actually let these sit in the ramekins for about one to two minutes, and then we'll proceed to unmold the cakes. I wind up utilizing something like this little uh, offset spatula. You could use a table knife or a butter knife. That'll wind up working fine. I'm gonna grab a hold of the ramekin very carefully in the palm of my hand and take the knife and go all around 
the inside of the ramekin to free up the cake. Take a little serving dish, invert it on top of the ramekin, and turn it on over, and proceed to go with the remaining cakes. And just let those sit in there with the ramekin inverted over the top. They can actually sit in that state for two to three minutes. After a few moments, you could actually take the handle of your knife, give these guys a little tap, go ahead and lift them on up. It's a really good example of a well-baked cake. Keep in mind that it will take a little bit of practice for you to get all of them looking lovely. Here I have some creme anglaise in a squeeze bottle. You can see that video elsewhere on how to fill this and also how to make the sauce. I'm going to take some creme anglaise and actually place some drops into the corner of each plate. And I'm going to take some strawberry sauce, a, sauce, a recipe you can see elsewhere, and also how to fill the bottle too. I'm going to take a small amount of sauce, get a couple of drops right there onto the anglaise. And that is our molten chocolate cake with a crumb anglaise and strawberry sauce decor. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click other links on the site to find other recipes. Also be sure to subscribe so you can see other treats that I'll be baking. If you can't find something that interests you, go ahead and send an email to requests at mahalo.com. See you soon.